I'm so proud of Dream. <laughs> You're gonna be buying his own groceries. When you have your own place, you're responsible for everything and, and oh my god but at least nowadays you don't really have to get no cable i mean shoot you want hbo you can you can go online and order hbo stars hulu you got apple tv you got so much that you could do online now you don't even have to call the cable company <laughs> and then some of these websites they're connected to the cable companies take your time and everything you do is worth it it's worth taking a moment, a day or two, to think about something before you sign on the dotted line. Okay. Starting all over again. Hey, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. All on us. But we're gonna make it. Hey. Starting all over again. <laughs> it's gonna be rough. All on us. We're gonna make it. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. I'm I'm shocked that I can actually say it's morning, but it is. This morning I'm going to make Nadine some grits. And after I finish cooking them, I'm gonna put some chives on top of them. But I got me some fresh red onions I just cut up and I'm gonna use this plant-based original plant-based original Italian sausage we usually don't eat these as far as like a sandwich or anything like that because um, I don't like them like that but they got really good flavor in them for just as far as like cooking and things of that nature um, also I'm going to use some basil inside the grits and some garlic and then I'm going to sprinkle it with some cheese and I'm going to make her um, a fried egg so that she could chop it up and put it inside her grits and then right after that I'm going to vlog I'm not gonna vlog too much I'm gonna talk I feel like um, I feel like talking this morning so that's exactly what I'm gonna do as soon as I get this food made and I'm not really like vlogging like I'm going out or anything this morning I'm just gonna be talking to y'all I feel like I need to talk to y'all um, I got some things I want to talk about I feel like would be very knowledge knowledgeable and great information especially if you're going to be a, like a first time renter and you you finally get in your own place on your own i got some information i want to give you before you start to look for your own place and after you get it <laughs> yeah so let me get to cooking and then we can talk okay sorry about the washing machine i'm washing towels this morning so this is what i'm doing with Okay, let's wait for the neighbor to stop walking. Okay, so this is what I'm doing with my sausage. I'm frying it up with um, the red onions and just a little butter. Probably the same amount of butter I probably is going to use inside the grits. So I won't have to add the butter. I'm just going to add water to this. And then I'm going to cook the grits inside. Okay, this is the end result. Nadina already got her food and she's she's eating and I'm about to sit down and eat. Yeah, I sprinkled some of the sausage and onions on top and then you got some cheese and a fried egg on top of your grits. Okay, spare lights, I'm finally sitting down um, about to eat because I'm really I'm hungry and I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. The dad from kitchen exhausted me. I felt like it was waiting on me. But I got the kitchen clean. The only thing I got to do is give it like a, a, a nice little sweet mop and that's going to be about it. And I might not even do that till later. So after I wake up, I was I thinking that when I'm finished this, I'm just going to head mm, right on the bed. Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. My studio. <laughs> and see my crazy. I ain't, I'm just looking at it. I ain't messing with that. Mm-mm. Maybe tomorrow. Sure. Ain't got nowhere to be. And I need to be in the house when I don't have nothing really important to do. Then to be out there. Okay. You guys. Dream. If I haven't mentioned it. I think I mentioned it yesterday. That he went to go pick up his keys. Well. He had his keys. To his apartment. I'm so proud of him. It's been a journey. Because Dream had been. Threatening. Basically I say threatening. Because whenever me and him get into it. He tell me he moving out. I'm going to say four years now. <laughs> four years. Child. He did it. He did it. I'm so proud of him. So happy, right? But this, but this made me want to talk to some of my young people. It might be some older people, too. You know, some people... Do things slower than other people, depending on circumstances, situations, and stuff like that. It's not easy trying to get your first apartment unless you know somebody who already have an apartment for you, already own the house, and they say, hey, I'll give you my apartment. All you got to do is move in. You got it like that. Hey, child, <laughs> you are totally, totally blessed. Now, for the rest of the world, we ain't got it like that. That's why I'm going to talk to you. And this is just mainly concerning people that has never, ever, ever had their own place. Never lived in the house, never rented a house, never leased a house, never had their own place. They always lived with somebody, even if they were paying rent. But I'm saying your own place that is in your name and that you're the one that's responsible for it. I'm going to tell you some stuff, and I'm going to give you some real life uh, experience, okay? <laughs> to back up what the freak I'm talking about. Because that's what I have to do with my son. I'm going to talk to you <laughs> as if I was talking to Dream, okay? And I have to do that because he's the reason why I'm doing this freaking video for you. He's the reason, I'm telling you. And if this video helped you, you could thank Dream. You can thank him, okay? Now, let's talk about before, you know, you go look for your own place. Make sure that you are completely sure that you are completely, completely, completely sure that you're moving out. And that you're definitely, definitely is going to do everything you can to be moved out. Especially if you stay, well, this is for if you're staying with someone like your mom, a sister, a aunt, a cousin, a friend. I don't know. Whoever you're staying with. Make sure that you definitely, definitely made up your mind that you're going to be moving out. Because sometimes things go good when you tell a person that you're moving out. And sometimes they don't. When Dream first told me he was moving out, I was upset with him years ago. Because I felt like, why are you going to get your own place? Why not us stay together, work together as a family? So that we all can't afford the rent. So I was a little upset with him. And then I felt like the only time he said he was going to move out. 
It's because he was young. And he, he, he wasn't always willing and, and ready to give up whatever money he had. And because I was his mom, it was like he, he, he paid his rent, his part of the rent. And then as something important to him come up in his life, like his computer break, his guitar break, he got to travel, mom not getting the rent. You know what I'm saying? So... He, he didn't have the full responsibility of paying the rent. Me and Nadine did. So I would be upset with him. And then I didn't want him moving out. Because I didn't want him to end up moving out. And losing whatever place he had here in Texas. Because if you don't read over your paperwork. You don't keep up with your lease. You don't know what you're signing. And you mess up. They can mess you up so bad. You can't get an apartment, a house, nothing. You can't get nothing in Texas because Texas is a big old network and they all work together. Now, I can't tell you about, you know, other places. I only can tell you about the places I know about. And uh, right now, I'm talking about Texas. Because I live in Texas and my son... And got his first freaking apartment in Texas. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and sometimes when you're staying with people and you tell them you're moving out, they can make things difficult for you. Um, you don't want to burn bridges with people just because you're moving out. And even if they have done like Things you know, people do stuff. You know, people do stuff. Even if you're not trying to like stay in communication with them or whatever, just keep everything cordial until you to freak out. Until you got your own place, like seriously, because <laughs> people do stuff. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to why I say don't burn your bridges moving out. Trying to, when you're trying to get your first place, I'm gonna keep saying it. When you're trying to get your first place, don't burn your bridges moving out. The best way to look for your first place, we do apartment.com, but they got renters.com. They got all kind of .com on, you know, where to look for apartments at. But the main thing I want to say about no matter how you look for your apartment, if you go to, you go online, you look in your local newspaper, or you go to a realty. Whatever you do, do not talk to anyone that will tell you that you can look at your apartment, you can do a tour online. And if you like the apartment, send them the application fee, registration fee, and send them the deposit, whatever they're asking for. And when you send the rent, they'll send you the keys. Don't do that. That is a huge, huge no-no. That is a huge scam. Unless you know someone physically, eye to eye, you can touch that person. You know that person. And that person told you, this is who I dealt with. And they A1, they good. And I had an experience of having a place from them. And they did me right. And I, I was able to tour my place online. I was able to send in my deposit. I was able to send in my read. And they melt me the keys. Okay. If that happened, that's great. That's good. That's the way to go. Okay? But if you do not know no one physically, and they tell you to do all of those things, back off. Back the freak off. And then you got to be careful because a lot of times when you call from an apartment, they do ask you for your name, your phone number, uh, when you're looking for an apartment. When you're thinking about moving and all of this stuff, you know. So now they got some of your information that they can just easily put out there. Now, the other night, my son said, uh, what is an administration? 
registration fee for an apartment. And I said, oh, okay, so you found something that you like. He said, yeah, I just got to pay the administration fee, the deposit, the application fee. And I said, oh, okay. You didn't pay the administration fee when you went to go see the apartment. Now, I'm going to tell you, the application fee usually run, you know, 50 to $200. The administration fee usually run 100 to $350. And you usually pay for the application and administration fee at the same time, usually. And if you approve, you pay a deposit. Or, or, or sometimes you pay the administration fee, the application fee, and the deposit. And then if you approve, then you could pay the rent and get your keys. If you're not approved, then they give you a certain amount of time of when they will send your deposit back. But you lose the application fee and partial of the administration fee if i'm not mistaken sometimes you lose the administration fee and the application fee and the only thing you get back is your deposit and what i want to say about that be careful about that too because a lot of places will tell you that they got an apartment for rent and you pay the application fee and administration fee and then they'll tell you that They'll run your credit and everything. They'll tell you got approved for apartment, but they don't have the apartment anymore. It was already gone. That's what they'll tell you. Most likely, they never had the apartment. They just took your money. Okay? Oh, be careful with that too. I'm just telling you because it has happened to me. And I was very, very upset. And then they tried to give me an apartment that I didn't want at all. As a matter of fact, they tried to put me on the fourth floor and they had no elevator child. <laughs> they had no freaking elevator. That's another story. But anyway, that's my point. Be careful with that. Now, getting back to dream. I said... Did you see the place? He said, yeah, mom, I seen it. I took a tour online. The apartment's nice. I said, what? I said, and, and they told you to send in an application fee, deposit, administration fee, and all of that. I said, do call them back and tell them that you want to make an appointment. You want to see that apartment. He said, Mom, I can't. They said it's COVID-19. They only showing the apartments online. We have to do everything online. And they'll mail him the key. I said, let me tell you something. I asked him how much was the apartment. The apartment that he seen was running about $1,200. He would have lost his $1,200 plus the application, plus the deposit, plus the administration fee. And he wouldn't have got to see no actual real apartment in the physical at all. He, and, and then he called the person back and he asked him, when do they think that they may be showing the actual apartments? And they said, oh, we don't show the apartments. You only can see it online. You have to make your decision from that. I'm going to tell you, one, you can't make a decision from that because people can take uh, pictures and fume of apartments when they cleaned them up or from a long time ago. And then when you go there and see the actual apartment, it don't it looks it's the same apartment, maybe. But the apartment got some serious serious problems. It might have smell, uh, you might have dog issues, you might have infested issues like bugs. You might have it might be all, all kind of stuff going on with the apartment. So you don't go by what they tell you to look at and then they'll tell you oh what we showed you was a model but the apartment looks similar to that apartment and it's a totally different apartment a totally different apartment now i don't learn my my mistake in the past i would go see apartments and they would tell me yeah they got an apartment ready and i'd be all happy the apartment be so freaking cute and then they tell me it's a model so i'm Thinking like, wow, but you know, your apartment's going to be here. It's going to be on this floor. But it's going to be the same apartment. 
you know. And so I'm in there and I'm paying my rent, my deposit. I don't pay my administration fee and my application fee. When I went to go pick up the keys, the apartment was nowhere near the location they told me it was going to be at. And it looked nothing like the model. The model looked like a beautiful, gorgeous, uh, comfortable place you would definitely want to move into. It looked nothing like that. It was it was a nightmare. It was scary. Man, I went back down there. I told that lady, I said, now look, that apartment is not even clean. The door don't look safe. The apartment don't look nothing like the apartment that you showed me that was the model. She said, well, that apartment is not um, available anymore that we was going to give you. And we know you need an apartment now, so we, we gave you this one. I said, uh-uh, nope, uh-uh. Nope, because you lied to me, I want my deposit, I want everything back. It was it was to the point where it, the apartment was so bad that they ended up giving me the application feedback. So you have to be careful with going to apartments and seeing the models. Make sure you ask them, I want to see the actual apartment that is available that I can put my deposit on now so I can move in on this date. And unless you don't have to move into an apartment, you know, a month, two months later, but if you need an apartment now, look at the apartment that is available because they would tell you that apartment is going to be available. They would give you an apartment that's supposed to be available and then the person, somebody's living in it. And then that person changed their mind and said they're not moving. Now you don't have no apartment, you don't have your rent deposit and you have to wait for an apartment to come available. And then they'll say, well, we got this apartment available and it's nothing what you wanted. Well, I told my son, I said, look, I know that I get on your nerve and I talk to you sometimes till you blue in the face. But you need to listen to me. This is your first apartment. Getting an apartment over a thousand dollars is not a good idea. You, anyone who's getting their first apartment, and in my opinion, even if you have like one child, maybe two, five to seven hundred dollars, unless you have, you know, a really good job that's paying you thousands of dollars a month, and you know for sure you could pay for a two, three thousand. Girl, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you get an apartment that's going to be within your budget. Because most apartments, you have to make at least two times. But nowadays, now you have to make at least three times the rent to get the apartment. And sometimes it may take two people to be able to qualify. Sometimes even for one bedroom. Because the apartments are, are some of the apartments are really high nowadays. If this is your first apartment, don't get nothing that's like reaching reaching too much where if things came to a hope or if you had some issues you're not going to be able to pay your rent because they will definitely definitely after the first they only give you a few days and they putting you out they ain't working nothing out with you where you could pay an extra hundred dollars every time you pay rent or an extra hundred dollars every time you get paid mm -mm. Mm -mm. They're not doing all of that. So make sure when you're looking for your first apartment, my best advice is to live below. You know what I mean? Lot, most people in the world live be, be above their means because everybody wants something nice. Everybody wants something beautiful. A lot of people like to outshine other people. Some people worried about Joneses. I say always always live below your means because you never know when something going to happen or a crisis is going to happen. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's really important right now. Before you decide to move out, make sure you let the people know who you stand with. No matter who it is, I'm moving out. And I may need you to verify that I, I stay with you or I'm, I'm here time to time, 
or my mail is coming here, but I'm not on the lease and I'm not obligated to pay the rent there because in Texas, when you go to fill out an application, they want your last rental history. And if you have not been on no one's lease, if you have not signed a lease within, you only got like, I think a two year period, they charge you a heavy deposit fee, heavy. Like for instance, if you move into an apartment, the deposit could run between 50 to, uh, you know, maybe seven, eight, maybe a thousand dollars, you know, it don't matter. But if you have not been on a lease in the last two years, that extra deposit definitely is not going to cost you no 50, no 200, no 300. It's going to cost you exactly whatever the apartment is costing you. So if you end up paying $2,000 a month for an apartment, that deposit to move in that apartment because you have never been on a lease, it's going to cost you $2,000 to move in it. $2,000 extra besides the regular deposit, the administration fee, the application is going to cost you that much extra, whatever that apartment is going to cost. And I'm going to tell you how to get around that right now. If you are not on a lease and you're thinking about moving real soon, maybe in the next six months, maybe in the next year, talk to the person that you're staying with and ask them to put you on a lease. Make some type of agreement with them of how much you're going to pay. Be responsible. Pay the part that you agreed on. Because if you don't pay, they can easily go and have your name removed from the lease. And you don't want that, especially if you're trying to move out. It's better to have your name added to the lease. For instance, if you're staying with a sibling. And a sibling really don't want much from you. And you agree to pay them Maybe a hundred dollars every time you get paid, and it might add up to maybe four hundred dollars a month. That's literally probably nothing compared to what they're paying as far as lights, sewer, and rent, water. You know, even bringing food in the house. Have your name added to the lease. That way, when you get ready to go look for an apartment, they will see that you your name was added to the lease. The rent has been paid on time, and you will get you will get approval for the apartment right away. Then to you know, have somebody chosen over you who had their name on a lease supposed to you never having your name on a lease. You know, if two people signing up for the same apartment around the same time, they most likely going to go with someone who has had a lease. Okay. And then if you get your name on a lease in the past two years, you can still use it as reference. But most likely, you're still going to pay that heavy, heavy deposit. There's no way around it. So make sure that you get your name added to the lease. Now, if you don't want your name added to the lease, and or you don't have to pay anything, you don't have to be responsible for anything, start saving a certain amount of money. Whatever the amount of the apartment that you have an idea of what you're going to pay for. For instance, if the apartment that you're thinking that you're going to pay for is $1,600, $1,700, start saving $1,700. So that way, when they say you're going to need your first month rent, you're going to need the deposit of this amount, and then you're going to need the administration fee, and you're going to need the application fee because you're ready to get an apartment right then and there, when they say, well, because your name is not on no lease, you owe $1,700 extra, you will have it. And you'll thank me later. You'll thank me later because that is the worst feeling when you got everything, everything you need, but you don't have no references and you don't have your name on a lease and no one can vouch for you. Now, the, the, now the thing is, just because your name is not on a lease doesn't mean you're not going to get an apartment. You're just going to pay that extra deposit. And that's what I'm preparing you. Prepare yourself for that extra deposit. Get in your own first apartment. My daughter had to go through it. When she was younger, uh, she had to pay her first. Uh, it was it was a while ago, though, when Nadine had, when she got a, her first apartment and she had to pay that heavy fee. 
I had to do it. I had to pay a, a, an extra deposit when I was younger, and that was years ago. I don't. That thing is still going on to this day. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. But an extra deposit don't seem like much if it's just two, three hundred dollars. It's not gonna be that. It's not gonna be that. It's it's steep when you gotta still pay, you know, the rent and everything. You know, and see, in here in Texas, you can find. A fifteen hundred dollar apartment, and they may say the deposit to move in is only two fifty. Two hundred and fifty dollars to move in. <laughs> That's all you gotta pay. Oh my God, and that is true. That is true. Two hundred and fifty dollars to move in the apartment. Okay, and not no townhouse. I think townhouse you have to pay the whole deposit, and I think that's the same way for the house. But for for an apartment. Your deposit could be between fifty to three hundred dollars. If you have already had an apartment, you paid your rent on time, you you want a lease, and uh, you got good references, you ain't gonna have no problem with. I, and the other thing, if you got good credit, I'm talking about good credit as far as like your credit score being somewhere like in the seven to the eight, you probably won't have to pay no deposit which is nice no deposit just your rent and your administration fee and your application fee now i think with the administration fee what comes with that is that they run your credit and they process the application so that's something that you don't get back that's not that's just something you don't get back you got to be prepared for that my son wasn't prepared for all of these extra fees I told you a lot. I hope that helped you. And then I'm going to tell you this. Before the apartment give you your keys, you got to have renter's insurance. Okay? And you got to have the lights turned on before you can get your keys and before you can move in. Now, make sure you call around. Don't just choose the light company that they give you. Okay? Ask someone you the best you know suggestion or best you know idea of what they think is a electric company that you can call because there are some electric companies if you was to miss the bill by a few days or you were late they would tack on a three hundred dollar fee of a deposit and and you'll get your light bill and your light bill not a hundred and ten your light bill like four hundred and fifty dollars. I know, I know. I was shocked when they said they said when I called and I told them that I had already, you know, paid my electric bill. But I went up to a grocery store and paid my electric bill, and I think I was uh, at least three days from the due date of the electric bill. And they said that they got the bill, but whenever you are late, they add on deposit. Now they can do this. Every three months, they can tack on that deposit. They won't do just tack on the deposit one time. So you have to be on time with your electric bill with a lot of those companies. So keep try to keep your electric bill down. Try to keep uh, don't have so many things plugged in. I know it seems like things don't. It's just nothing. Nothing's on. Nothing's gonna add up. But when you you already have the refrigerator, the stove, the dishwasher, the washing machines automatically plugged in. So that's running. That's running. And then all the other little stuff add on. Leaving the lights on all night long. You know. Or, you know. Bills. Light bill runs up. And before you know it, you went from paying eighty dollars to one hundred and forty dollars. Uh, when I lived in a one bedroom apartment and I kept the lights down. I, I literally, the light bill did not go over $62 a month. So I was happy about that. But when the summertime come, the light, the electric bill go up. And that's because you're using the AC. So then my electric bill went up to 140 The electric run different from the summer and the winter months and the spring months. So they fluctuate. But make sure you ask about the best electric company that's going to be best for you. Um, I, I deal with an electric company. Um, that I have never had an extra deposit or just out of nowhere, my bills skyrocket high. And I've been dealing with them for years, but I have done what dealt, dealt with other electric companies before, you know. So 
the best thing to do is to check around. I know when I gave my son the name of the electric company I dealt with, he is like, well, I see other companies, they, they're, they, they running lower, they're cheaper. And that sounds good. Like I told my son, that sounds good until you just happen to maybe not get the electric bill paid on time. Something happened and they tack on that huge deposit and you already struggling. Not saying that he will, you know, or, you know, I'm not saying that you will, but I was struggling during the time that they did that. I built, I was make, I was trying my best to just make sure I at least keep the lights on and it, it, it pay the rent and whatever you have left, you go pay the electric bill and then they tack on that deposit. And then now you worry, like now the lights definitely going to go off because I'm going to pay this deposit. Make sure you check around and pick the best electric company for yourself. I'm going to tell you another thing they tell you. They'll tell you something like they got these free nights or they got the free weekends, the free day. If you barely home and you barely use electricity, just go with the regular plan. Just go with the regular plan because that's just a waste of money. I'm going to just tell you that. Ask somebody. Ask, <laughs> ask somebody who pay their bills for a long time continuously. Ask them about the electric. Okay. Now. The other thing, when you get your own apartment, they'll tell you something like, for instance, they may say the rent is $1,500 a month, but they, this is just what they say, the rent is $1,500, but they, what they don't tell you is that you're going to pay for water and sewer and garbage. All of that is tacked onto the rent. So even though you pay $1,500, now your rent is probably actually $1,680, you know what I mean, or $1,500. Um, uh, 40 depending on where you live at depending on how much they charge it's a totally different price that they add on to your rent and don't think you could just pay the rent and pay that later you will be charged a late fee and it is considered all your rent together they will consider your whole rent late if you try to do something like that so remember when you go looking for a place if, if you're looking for an apartment uh, for 1500 look for an apartment that's 1400 so when they tack on the, the water the garbage and the sewer you still stay within your 1500 yes okay that is very very important because even though you may go look at an apartment because 1500 in your budget and you happy about it you know uh, something come up in your life you 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 don't have extra money that extra hundred dollars hurt it really does it hurts one more thing, it's one more thing I want to tell you before I'm gone. I'm running my mouth so much. I done made my own self sleeping. Renters insurance. Before you can move an apartment, you got to have renters insurance. Now, some apartments will say, oh, we offer renters insurance for $12, $15 a month. I'm going to tell you from advice I can give you. No. Call an insurance company that you're familiar with. Like I'm familiar with um, farmers, state farm, all state. There's a whole lot of insurance companies out there. If you've been doing business with them or you drive and they take care of your car, call them, ask them about rental insurance. Their apartments, rental insurance may be totally different. Now, I have never, ever had any problem when it came to renter's insurance. And I'm gonna give you two names that I have that I have always dealt with. I either dealt with State Farm or I dealt with Allstate and I never had a problem with my rental insurance. I'm gonna name three of the electric companies that I have always dealt with and then I'm gonna tell you which one I like the best. Uh, they got TXU, Centerpoint, and Direct Energy. I like Direct Energy. The best thing to do is to talk to someone and ask them what's the best you know, company that they should, that you should go with. And I'm sure they will help you. And if they don't help you do some research and then talk to um, the person on the phone and choose the best plan for you, don't just take the deal. Okay. Okay. I think I gave you some great advice <laughs> about getting your first apartment. And if you are someone out there looking for your first apartment and you're on your way to getting your first apartment, I'm going to congratulate you in advance. Try to stay calm. Uh, it can be overwhelming and you can lose patience, especially when somebody's trying to help you. Like when I'm trying to help my son and he started, mom, ba, ba, mom, 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 mom. And I'm trying to tell him something. I said, look, okay, do you want me to tell you or what? 
okay? Once he calmed down, he'll come to me and say, okay, mom, I'm calm. Tell me. Then my son came to me and my daughter the other day, and he said, you know what, mom? You need a lot of support out here in this world. I'm really learning that no matter how much you try to do things on your own, you still need support. And I'm so happy that I have a great support system. And I was like, wow, you welcome, Dream. <laughs> because, you know, I wish when I was younger, I had support when I was younger. I had support when I was younger, but when you move from state to state, like I had left uh, New Jersey and I, I moved to uh, Virginia and I didn't have support down there, you know, on how to go about, you know, looking for an apartment, but they, you know, because every state is different. Every state is different. Like, for instance, New Jersey, and nobody's putting you out in no four days if you don't pay your rent. They're not putting you out. They're taking your butt to court. And by the time you go to court and you probably done work something out and you can pay your landlord. It don't work like that here in Texas. It do not work, work like that here in Texas. So, um, my my mainly advice is for someone who's in Texas, and if you're not in Texas and you can use this video, basically make sure you take some of the advice. See your apartment in the physical. Make sure you don't leave whoever you're staying with on bad terms just in case they got to be a reference for you, okay? You pay your rent. Make sure you pay your rent on time because renting and leasing an apartment can definitely jack up your credit. You need to know that beforehand. It is a huge responsibility when you decide to be completely and 100% on your own. But I wish you a lot of luck, a lot of blessings, and congratulations in advance if you're one of those people. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and finish eating. I only got a little bit of my grits left. It was really good. Really delicious. I'm going to go watch a little TV. I'm going to call it a day for a little while. It's been raining and storming so heavy lately that it's just, this got me feeling so relaxed. I've been feeling relaxed for like two days because of the rain and storm. And I feel like I'm not getting enough sleep. So it's in the middle of the day. If we didn't have to like really stay at home too much, I'd probably be out there. But I'm going to go get me some sleep. And I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to use this time to get as much sleep as I possibly can so that I have enough energy to be able to go everywhere once I know everything is good out there. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of Dream. <laughs> He's going to be buying his own groceries. Would he do that now? Because he eat differently than me and Nadine. Me and Nadine eat a lot of organic and gluten-free, sugar-free, plant-based stuff. <laughs> and my son, my son is a vegetarian, but he, you know, <laughs> he, he, don't, he don't eat like me and they do. <laughs> so he's already buying his own groceries. But when you have your own place, you're responsible for everything. And, and, oh my God! But at least nowadays you don't really have to get no cable. I mean, shoot, you want HBO? You can you can go online and order HBO, Stars, Hulu. You know, there's so many. Um, you got Apple TV. You got so much that you could do online now. You don't even have to call the cable company. <laughs> and then some of these websites they're connected to the cable company, so you know you don't even have to do all of that. If you do decide to get cable, that's another bill, you know, and furniture. One, oh, I'm glad I'm running my mouth. It's a good thing I'm running my mouth, and it's going to be my last advice, and then I'm out for the day, or well, for right now. <laughs> my last advice, when you go to get furniture, make sure if you're trying to build your credit that you get furniture, but stay low-budgeted within your means, and... Make sure that the furniture you get is going to build up your credit. But don't get furniture where you have like this high bill plus rent. Because you, you, you start paying tip for tap, not paying your furniture bill can mess up your credit. Okay? So, and then, you know, if you move into a place, try not to furnish it all at once. Maybe you can get like a, uh, a nice bedroom set, but a uh, nice bedroom set and then maybe get like a sofa and be creative. You could shop around and get and see my son is very creative. He 
he's he's all he had already started shopping around for whatever he was going to do before he moved into his apartment so you could shop around and save yourself some money don't go to the furniture store and order a whole apartment full of furniture <laughs> and now at the end of the month you got three four hundred dollars to pay uh-uh no if there's something you really need from the furniture store get it get that one thing take your time with it build yourself up build your credit up take the time take your time and everything you do is worth it it's worth taking a moment a day or two to think about something before you sign on the dotted line that is the best advice i can basically give you okay if you're not trying to build your credit up and you don't care about credit and they got a deal for you and you can pay in three six months okay but i never buy anything unless it's going to benefit me if it ain't going to benefit me i don't want it if it ain't going to boost my credit make my credit score better or make me look good i don't want it i don't want it if um i before i take a deal i've got to save my money and shop around and buy what i need spirit girl is out see y'all again soon bye thanks for watching make sure y'all hit that thumbs up for me and uh mm, comment you know yeah leave a comment especially some good advice comments ladies and young men you know my fellas these are some nice comments for people who's trying to move and get that first apartment so they could be well prepared you know so they, they're not overwhelmed and and sad and depressed that you know they're not in a position to get an apartment because they didn't get themselves ready and that's what this video is for to help you get ready for your first apartment <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i i'm so excited for my son i'm going shopping for him soon i want to uh, go get him some things I'm, i want to get a gift bag and i want to buy some cute stuff to just put inside of it that he can use for his apartment you know i'm, I'm so excited for him Anyway, you guys, have a wonderful day, afternoon, and night, and I'm out. Bye.